Hey, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about average acceleration. So this is appropriate for physics or AP physics or other physics related courses. So we're going to go through exactly the concepts you need to know around average acceleration and how to calculate problems with them. And I'm going to show you some graphing things you need to know as well for this. All right. So just a quick recap. Where have we been? I have just done a lesson on slope of a displacement versus time graph. I will put a link in the upper right for that if you missed that and you need a little background understanding what's going on as you think about a velocity versus time graph. This lesson is on average acceleration, graphing acceleration, and acceleration due to gravity. And building on that, our next lesson that we're going to go through is comparing position velocity and acceleration versus time simulations. So there are some great simulations out there and I'm going to show you those, talk you through a couple of them, get you started in case you want to click on a couple links and mess around with them yourself. Just enough so that you can understand what you're doing and the background for what's going on. So that's where we're going with this. All right and so let's start with acceleration. So acceleration is the change of velocity of an object over time. So it's velocity divided by time, you could say. And it's a vector, and so direction is required. Vectors mean specific things. It means that there's a direction associated with it. And our basic equation, our basic acceleration equation right here is going to be this, delta V over delta T. So V final minus V initial, T final minus T initial. Sometimes this can be shortened to just T, and it's understood that our T initial is zero. In almost all cases, t initial is zero, although not every time. Just a quick reminder, the symbol is sometimes written in, sometimes not, depending on what the author wants to do. If they want to be kind and remind you that you're dealing with a vector, they may write it. You may see it like this. You may also see it like a half arrow as well. All right, and one more thing, just as we get started, I have taught many students over the years, and one of the things that can confuse them is if you see an equation like this with two equal signs in it, you're like, whoa, how do I do algebra with that? Am I going to be multiplying all of the numerators by something if I've got three? How do I work with that? The answer is typically you don't. What you're going to do is you're going to pick two. You're going to pick two out of the three parts of the equation you could say so if you pick these two parts over here just work with this over here or if you pick your two outside parts just work with your two outside parts and you would have that over here all right and so let's see how to do an example problem and so i made up a problem here about a child that puts a marble on a ramp so the marble starts from rest and after 3.45 seconds its velocity down the ramp is 2.22 centimeters a second what is the marble's average acceleration down the ramp all right so let's tackle this first of all you're going to want to assign a axis so you're going to want to make the forward direction positive backwards direction negative and since we have a ramp, to make this easy, we're going to make the x-axis parallel to the ramp itself. You could make the x-axis where it traditionally is, like horizontally, but that would make this problem a lot more difficult. You'd be dealing with two dimensions. We want to make this as simple as possible so that everyone understands. So we're going to say, we'll make the positive x-axis down the ramp. All right, and so our equation is average acceleration is delta V over T we can write what that means. Anytime you have a delta anything, that means change, and you start with your final minus your initial of whatever it is you're dealing with. You go ahead and plug in some numbers, and you end up with this as your answer, 0 0.644 centimeters per second squared. I do want to point out before we move on that this is going to be positive. I did not write this as a positive. It's implied that it's there. Just keep that in mind. That direction is important when we're working with vectors. Next up, before we move on, I do want to talk about these units right here because this is a bit wacky. Most students, when they first see something like this, they have no idea what this means, and that's okay. So first of all, I do want to say the acceleration you're going to be dealing with in a physics class or an AP physics class or another related class is usually going to be in units of meters per second squared. Just because we were dealing with like marbles, it was a little bit easier to work with centimeters per second squared like for this problem. But what does it mean per second squared? What does that mean? Well, let's look at what we have that goes into it. There are a couple ways of answering that. So centimeters per second squared, literally you have another second that's down here and they are multiplied together. So that's centimeters per second squared. That answers the question mathematically, but I think it's more helpful to think, all right, every second the velocity is changing by a centimeter per second value. So the change is centimeters per second for every second we're dealing with. And that's another way of thinking about what centimeters per second squared means. 
Okay, and next up, something very important we need to talk about is the acceleration due to gravity on the Earth. So typically that's going to be written as a lowercase g or as an a sub g, like acceleration due to gravity, you could say. Just depends on your teacher. G may be slightly more common, but you should become familiar with both. Okay, and so it turns out that if air resistance does not factor into the situation, all objects near the surface of the Earth fall with a special acceleration. It's called the acceleration due to gravity, which is shown as the variable g usually, or sometimes a sub g. This value is 9.81 meters per second squared. You're going to want to memorize this just because it comes up so often, especially in early units of physics. But that's the rate at which things will fall towards the Earth if they are allowed to fall and air resistance is not a major factor. A lot of people have trouble with this. A lot of people have misconceptions about this because they think to themselves, all right, if I drop like a brick and a piece of paper, obviously the brick is going to fall faster, right? But the truth is, is if you drop, say, a brick and a, maybe a bowling ball, and let's say the bowling ball has four times the amount of mass that the brick does, does it fall four times faster than the brick? The answer is no. If you were to drop a bowling ball and a brick, somewhere safe where it's not going to damage a floor, they would basically hit the ground at the same time. So as long as air resistance is not a significant factor, they will fall at the same rate. And you could say, well, wait a minute, how does that explain the previous example? And the answer is, it does explain the previous example because air resistance is a significant factor in terms of a force, which we haven't gotten to yet, but air resistance is a significant force to something like a piece of paper that you drop Whereas air resistance is not a significant force to something like a bowling ball. If you get into AP physics, you can talk about drag forces and how that all works out. And we haven't even talked about forces yet. So we'll get into that in a little more detail. But for now, take my word for it. Or better yet, ask your teacher for a lab to work with this that deals with acceleration due to gravity being 9.81 meters per second squared. By the way, that is not the case on something like the moon. It's a different value. I do want to talk you through an example, an example, a different example than the one we wrote out with the marble. This example is just an object that's dropped, something that's very, very high up, like maybe even an airplane, where this object has a long time to be able to fall without hitting the ground. This data over here, if air resistance or drag was not a factor, this would be the velocity values. They would be negative, assuming down is negative. And if we plotted them in the graph, it would look like this. That means every second, if we have a gravitational acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared, that means every second the velocity changes by a negative 9.81. That's what that acceleration means. So this 9.81, we add another negative 9.81, negative because it's moving in the downward direction, and that will give us our final velocity at these different times. If I were to graph that, it would look like this. And if we look at our data over here every second, it still has the same acceleration. And one thing that's really powerful and interesting about this is that this slope right here, the slope of this, is going to give us our instantaneous acceleration during that time. So if we look at the slope during this time right here, any point along this line, like you could say, well, what's the acceleration at four seconds? Well, that would be minus 9.81. Okay, well, what is the acceleration at two seconds? Well, that would be minus 9.81 meters per second squared. Well, what is the acceleration at six seconds? Well, that would be negative 9.81 meters per second squared as well. So the slope here, is constant and it's negative and that is also our acceleration. All right and so next up I want to give you another example. Let's say this time you're talking about a dropped object with specific numbers here from zero to four seconds. The question is let's go ahead can we can we calculate this? Can we calculate what the acceleration is going to be with these values and look at the graphs as well and see what we can figure out. All right so we're going to work with that acceleration equation again. We plug in some numbers here we end up with our acceleration of minus 9.81 meters per second squared. All right, well, what if we just use our slope calculation equation, which you're probably familiar with from a math class? It actually turns out to be the same thing if we're dealing with a velocity time graph. So the slope of a velocity time graph is the acceleration. You plug in your numbers and you get the exact same thing. 
All right, and so lastly, I just want to summarize this. If you take a look, I've plotted that data again. This is the only graph that's new that you haven't seen before. If we take a position time graph, we find the slope. So if I find this slope at, like, say, during this time right here, I have some value. How about the velocity after one second? What would my velocity be? What would my slope be at that point? After one second, think about it, it's in free fall. What would my velocity be? My velocity after one second would be minus 9.81 meters per second. At two seconds, it would be another negative 9.81 added on to that, you could say. So it would be like 19.6 or something like that. And importantly, I want you to take a look at this graphic right here. So if you have a position versus time graph, finding the slope or taking the derivative gives instantaneous velocity. If you are not in calculus, you probably do not know what I'm talking about with finding the derivative. So don't worry about that too much. But if you're in calculus or in AP physics, you need to pay attention to that. So you take the slope of this position time graph and you get your velocity. You take the slope of a velocity time graph and you end up with the acceleration. This is a very important set of concepts. This is a huge point of intersection with physics and math. These are actually really important ideas. What I want to do is I want to illustrate this with a couple simulations that I found and that's what my next lesson is going to be. So hopefully this lesson has been helpful. Thank you for listening. Please watch my next lesson, and if you have any comments, please throw a comment down below. Thanks, and have a great day.